Hey guys, what an incredible segment that Dr. Dario Nardi and I have for you today. We discuss when the types are transcendent, their fully realized selves. We also discuss transcendence at a deeper level, how to get beyond the one-sidedness of type to achieve self-realization by activating our non-preferred functions. We also talk about transcending and enhancing typical intertype dynamics. I want to share too a fascinating talk that I had with Dr. Nardi, not on this channel, but on my new channel, in which we talk about unearthing the wealth within our unconscious in a way that helps us realize our full selves and helps us heal at a fundamental level. We also talk about current society's role in suppressing this. Find out more on my new channel in which I'll be posting the video up very soon. So I'll have a link to my channel up above and very soon I'll have it the, a link to the video down below in the, the description. I also have a great new video up on my new channel about how you could come to mindful self-awareness in such a way that would help you when you're going through a negative spiral like we all do. I have a link to that down in the description below. On this channel here, there's more of this fascinating interview coming up with Dr. Dara Nardi, and he will also be singing and sharing his Nordic Viking songs. Subscribe and stay tuned. On, on a very superficial level, it seems like, oh, intuition has to do with transcendence, and then, uh, but that's not the case. It's actually equal across types. And the work you did in the articles to show like the differences in each type and how that would express itself. Mm -hmm. And, and it was really wonderful to, to read through Jung's quotes and talk to, I had a number of, especially ISFJs and ESTJs, yes, ESTJs, uh, read through introverted sensing, the wholeness with joy, and be like, oh, of course, like that's absolutely it. And I don't live there, but I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I've had times in my life where I've been there. And like, see, I mean, like this, it's an amazing space and it's just as equal in yes. its value and its transcendence. It's true. Yeah. Um, when I read the essay, I actually thought, well, I have um, my ESFJ mom and I could, I could definitely see the, the transcendent in her in terms of the essay, like wanting to pass to me all the, all the traditions that like work. But like, it's almost like there's something almost spiritual about how she presented it. Yeah, yeah, and there there is an element where they go beyond repetition and beyond social adapting to really being like, I am standing by the change. And sometimes that change means, you know, and, and I think a really great example, although I'm not Jewish, is the Jewish faith and how the practices continue inside the families for mm -hmm. centuries, for millennia and through that process maintain incredible traditions in terms of education, in terms of, uh, you know, valuing uh, spirituality, philosophy, all of these things. It's like a community, and though it's not like, oh, it's tradition, therefore it's bad. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an example where then the extroverted intuiting person needs to be sort of shaken and say, like, hey, change for its own sake is not always good. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious about like uh, the other types too when it comes to this level of whole with joy how does that look like for them mm. um, so what's a good a good example well we, we can look at introverted feeling mm -hmm. yeah 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 why not right and um, for a quiet crusader here lies the truth of the heart, peace. Uh, this space requires tremendous self-awareness and self-acceptance, which in turn removes barriers and opens doors to accepting and working with others, no matter how different, even those in opposition or who may be promoting evil. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about people like Nelson Mandela, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the call to live uh, like the Buddha or Christ to be a person of profound harmony and character. 
And from this flows joy, healing, and tremendous capacity for inspirational leadership. Inspirational leadership. The Quiet Crusader is such a huge inspiration that others also feel free to set aside their selfishness, uh, based it is in anger and fear, to be both vulnerable and strong. And, and I think that the truly, when an FI, especially FI dominant person, reaches the space, one of the, 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 the hints, the, the cues, is that the people around them feel comfortable to feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a place of perfection. All of the human contradictions remain, and the Quiet Crusader's capacity to keep in harmony knows no bounds. In terms of it, if it's not feeling like, you know, like what I said earlier, it's like I will work with the opposition even if they're evil. Right. And, and when I think of examples of people, uh, and, and I don't actually know Nelson Mandela's type, but I really thought of that as, as someone uh, in the same Gandhi that, you know, when people would ask like, oh, this has happened and, and the, you know, the apartheid folks have done this and whatever, and they're like, what, is it? what do we do? And he's like, the answer is always the same, and that's peace. Mm -hmm. And how do we demonstrate that? So, of course, there has to be like a big vulnerability and a strength of character. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so interesting that Gandhi all the time engaged in self-testing. Mm -hmm. You know, because he was like, I know I'm a human being and I'm flawed, and it's very easy for me to get caught up in ego with like literally hundreds of millions of people like cheering for me. And being my responsibility is like, how do I maintain perspective with that? Um, and again, I, I don't know Gandhi's type, but I, I felt those were great examples yeah. of, of that kind of work. And it may be at times for, regardless of the person's type, that they can find that whole with joy at times in their careers. Mm -hmm. And so the person may mistake themselves overall for being in that space. So I think it is important to look at the whole picture. The, the people can have like winning moments or like, you know, streaks in a way. Mm -hmm. and, and yet we also want to look at like their personal life and all of these other things. Like Carl Jung had very interesting personal life. Um, you know, he too had a mistress. And, uh, you know, what, what is the story with that? Um, and... And so there, there's just this, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like that's an example and every one of them has the space. I, I just want to say, by the way, um, when you mentioned about um, the three stages of introverted feeling, and, and actually when I read about it in the article, I, I could identify with all three at different parts of my life. And I, I see how they even cycle through. So I would go one, two, and then to the other. And I thought it was also interesting too, like, the um the whole with joy phase is almost like the opposite to the in the grip phase like in the grip being of severe judgment the one being of like even if you're opposing um i'm i see you as part of the whole too mm -hmm. yeah 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 and that's and i feel like would be they're always it's not just an external experience or internal experience that the person is part of a system so how we see the person in the system or how the, the person behaves in the system. So if they're behaving in a very one-sided way, and I think it's important for people to understand in Psychological Types, the book, Jung says, uh, you know, fundamentally, their one-sidedness is the issue that I'm dealing with when clients come in, his, his psychiatry patients. And here are eight ways that people get really one-sided. That being a type is inevitable, it's useful, and it's also a problem. Mm -hmm. And he said type... He said the type problem. And he meant that in two senses. He meant that in the introverted thinking sense of it being like, oh, here's this interesting question. And it's a problem to work on, like to solve, like to, to answer the question. And he also meant it is like being a type is a problem. Hmm. And, and if people get stuck in their type like that, that's not a good thing. And Isabel Myers felt like, well, people can find balance with their auxiliary. And essentially, she, she outlined like a healthy, socially adapted or culturally adapted version of each type. You know, what she tended to sketch out. 
but we don't necessarily see the process. I mean, type is like relentlessly positive. I mean, especially in the pre-internet era, like just relentless, which is fine. Um, and then it also, for the most part, misses the like a spiritual component and the one-sidedness and the dynamics. And then we, we end up having to go to Jung and all to understand that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it also helps to have the Russian system too, socionics, because it's kind of like counterbalanced to the American way of looking at the typology. I, I have like, I, I wouldn't say like I'm a huge fan of socionics, but there are different versions of socionics, just like there are of Myers-Briggs Western version. Uh, I really like the quadra and how there, it shows up both sociologically and for individuals. Um, I find Victor Galenko, who is advocate of Model G socionics rather than Model A, which is the standard version, um, that the, the inner type relations are very interesting. Mm -hmm. I find them to be absolutely spot on when I read them. Um, and that I feel like that's actually one way to tell, like what functions are you using or what type are you, is which types do you get along with and how. And so if I wondered like, oh, maybe I'm really an INFJ. Well, first of all, they have like the subtype stuff, which is going to point to me being like the creative version of INTJ as opposed to the normalizing version or the director version or whatnot. And so I'm like, okay, so that explains a number of things why people say I look extroverted. I don't feel extroverted, but I get it. I see where that comes from. I can be on. I have no problem being on. I'm, I'm not like anywhere on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's also this, okay, a bit like, let's say if I were INFJ, like, do I get along with, other, with FJ types? Mm -hmm. Like ESFJ and so on. Because if I were an INFJ, I would get along, right? With like ISFJs and, and so on. And I'm like, no, actually I find folks FJ type who really... Like, there's nothing wrong with them any more or less than any other type, but, like, that's a really big, like, challenging stretch for me. Hmm. And, and so the, the inner type relation stuff is fascinating. And I think over the course of a person's life, even, like, if I look back to high school, ESTP is not a type that I would know how to interact with. Be intimidated by ESTPs and, like, I have no idea what to say to them or they're, like, really stupid or, like, whatever it is. Now, I know several ESTPs were like the coolest people in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, no, I get your shtick. Like, I understand what you're doing. Like, and I see your limitations too and all of that. And it's like, so it can also be used as a barometer for growth. Yeah. Inner type cool. relation stuff. I, I think at times that socionics is too abstract or mathematical, especially Model A for a lot of people. Um, but it definitely has its value, and I'm happy that it's there. And we have stuff yes. to learn from it. Yeah, I, there, there's definitely truth to the intertype dynamics. And I definitely, if people develop their functions, then it's almost like a reward because you get to interact with another type. So, for instance, uh, insured intuition being my sixth function, if I were to tap into that, then I, I feel like my conversations with um, INFJs, for instance, really gets much deeper because originally like not really sharing much functions, but when I get into it, it's like, well, we have a lot to talk about. Um, and, and I really want to stress now that you've mentioned that, that, that a big piece behind this was the empirical research. And, and I really think that once this gets published uh, in a non-type related journal, um, which it will be, that Mina Barmani, who's a professor at Johns Hopkins, uh, has done this such amazing job of analyzing two different instruments, their results, the Mark Majors PTI, which looks a lot like the MBTI, and he was somebody who worked on MBTI Form M, and then my own cognitive processes assessment with 130,000, you know, unique subjects. Mm -hmm. And really, really, like, there's no question, perception and judgment, like, we, our top two functions, we're going to have one in perception and one in judgment, that, they're, that sensing and intuiting are polarities and thinking and feeling are polarities. Uh, and one of the things that came out is actually the sixth function is a lot more prominent than people in the type community would probably like to think. Yeah, and that, that, that's pretty interesting because before it was like, a, it was a really big uh, socionics theory, but now it's like, it's, it's now in the data. Too. Yeah, yeah, and, and it really, I, I think it's almost like, and she draws a nice graph that there's like, 
first, second, third, fourth. And then, and then and that's fine. But if you're going to do five through eight, don't put them like further down on the graph. Like one has the first function has a shadow and like right next to it is the bar for the fifth function. And then you have second function and right next to it is the bar for the sixth function. Like your shadow is next to you, not like way over there. And it's really, you know, I, in I see it developmentally, like you want a solid base like a plate in a way where you're going to have like a buffet of food and, and that's your, your dominant function. And then the second, third, and sixth functions are things that I would say people typically in like the 15 to 35 year old, 40 year old age range like really want to work on. First, second, I mean second, third, and sixth. Mm -hmm. And a very nice balancing. Um, and then after that be like, okay, what about the fourth and fifth? And not that those things have to be, I'm not saying they come in a certain order, but there are benefits for each one of them. And I think people who have their sixth function just generally come off as way more well-rounded. Hmm. And, and like they really can stretch in directions. You'd be like, oh, you can go there too. Hmm. And, and then when people bring in their fourth and fifth function, that's when the magic happens. And when the person is doing stuff that's like uniquely them, or and, do, and doing it with people who are different from them, but still, it'd be like, in socionics, it describes like INTJ, ESTP can be a really good business pairing. Hmm. Not, I mean, there's limitations, of course, to it. And it does describe, too, like, it's better if, like, the INTJ is more extroverted and the ESTP is more introverted and so on. But there's, like, a very, and I'm like, yeah, no, that, that does work. Yeah. And, and it's having allowance. And, and plus the T, TI of the INTJ taps into that. Right, right, absolutely. And, and the same the, the, for the ESTP. The ESTP has enough extroverted thinking now to be like, oh, yeah, we do need to have like an organized plan and we need to fill out the calendar and have like some like analysis that we can trust. Yeah. So you can have like a different version of intertype dynamics. Like what if an intertype type dynamics that taps into the six function, how does that look like? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think then that shows in, in the years that I've worked with INTPs, I mean, like Linda Barron's is like, absolutely, I came to understand introverted thinking. I mean, even before her, just in graduate school, I had to. Um, and, and the same, you know, she was old enough, she had developed introverted intuiting to an extent. I want to say that we're not developed, but like integrated. And I want people to know integrated doesn't mean that I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it means I'm patient and allow other people to do it with me or for me as part of a team. Yes, that's, it's like an interdependence. Yeah, 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 an interdependence. And I feel that's, that's really a good description, especially for the fifth function, that, that it's not something we can really force or develop that well in ourselves because it is like the other side of the plate and you're not going to eat off the yeah. bottom of the plate, mm -hmm. but um, the underside of the plate. But to have that patience for those people who do have the fifth function mm -hmm. and to include those, those people, I, I think is just like a huge, again, that's where the magic happens. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's very interesting. I think that's just a holistic approach as in like, um, you could say Western society in, in a way um, is promoting like you do everything on your own. And if you could do it independently, then that, that's the sign of development. But there's this aspect of a lot allowing people to influence you in a way. Of course, there's the, there's a problem of codependence, but allowing people to influence you and support you. And that goes, that goes really far. I feel like when I collaborate with people, like the project could go into much farther direction than if I could, if I did it on my own. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like some of that is the natural sort of uh, the ego orientation of Western culture in general, which has produced a lot of wonderful successes. Like we're talking over the Internet, like technology came from somewhere. The 1720s onward was like a huge time of progress because people had the sense that like, oh, like if I, if I focus on actually being productive, mm -hmm. And, and actually being able to do these things, then the, the actually solving problems, like in that push towards progress and all of that, like, I mean, it's a very powerful effect. 
but then there's a price to pay for it 